you a background on this wellness for peace i wrote it way back in um 2009 okay because during that time i was doing um mall shows and uh office tour sponsored by welches and other and CISO International and other sponsors, wherein I talk about the discipline of wellness uh, through my book, The Innovative Mind and Body. And this um, innovative mind and body is actually, um, actually, it I wrote that when I... Um, survived from stroke okay uh, i had a stroke uh, in 2007 and then um survive okay eventually working in 2008 uh i was during the time that i had my stroke i was really bedridden and i did made a lot of you uh, a decision to forgo my production house I used to produce uh, stage plays and films and short films. And I also, um, with my director, I co-direct plays for children, value-oriented on environment. But I have to forego everything because um, I need to choose my health. And that was the advice of the doctor. And it worked. So I thought... Um, uh, okay, during my, 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 just to give you how, um, how terrible my stroke uh, ordeal during that time is that I wasn't able to walk and talk uh, for a month and it took me six months to recover eventually, but not fully recover, but was able to go down the stairs and also to uh, speak, um, uh, at least okay back to where i was uh, before but my strength had um, not that much anymore i was also told that there are side effects of stroke um of course um i we will not talk about that thing here because uh, a stroke is a huge um what's this um don't don't get into it uh but Maybe one one of these days I will have a video on how to um, how to recover from stroke and how not to have that. Okay, using the wellness for peace uh, discipline. So anyway, going back to my story. So when I survived the stroke, okay, since I uh, lost everything except for my, uh, the loved ones I have in the house. Uh, but properties and everything, okay, um, I have to let go. Also the company, we have to let go. And there is no other source, <laughs> okay. So I was offered to uh, share my um, recovery journal to everybody. Who are also struggling and um, sur finding ways to survive from stroke. So, um, why do I have that? Because one of the discipline I had when uh, I was um, in that bedridden state is that I, um, since I'm also a writer, <laughs> which is very difficult because. That is also one of the reasons uh, why, because I am a very workaholic person. Not just workaholic, but very. So, and also I wasn't taking care of my food intake and my sleep um, schedule. Okay, so uh, what I what happened is that in order for me to recover is that I resorted to natural healing method. At the first stage of my recovery, I have to take medicines, but then... Um, my body is reacting. It's not that, um, okay, it's, I, I, I am not much into those 
kind. So, I am more into the natural method. So, uh, also part of the food intake is uh, also to uh, detoxify the mind. So, I did a lot of writings on my diary. So, since I cannot work, and I am just in bed, might as well release all my thoughts in the journal. So, I was able to write a lot. Imagine every day for six months. That means I have a lot of things that uh, was released in my mind. And the journals piled up. <clears throat> There's so many. Remember, uh, if you are familiar with that yellow book, <laughs> okay? And then, uh, so I, I, I wrote everything, uh, how I was coping up, um, uh, starting from the day um, when I wake up, okay? Um, how the whole day, how it went through, what have I done, and then until the end of the day. That's why uh, the prayers... <laughs> Those are one of those things that I was able to write, inspired by so many things that happened also. And uh, that's why that prayer is a prayer for forgiveness. That's one way, actually, <laughs> if you want to achieve that peace, it's the best way to do it uh, internally. Okay, but of course, there are still so many things. So anyway... So, when after that uh, journal and all those stuff, I have all those files with me. I have nothing to do. Um, basically, my character and my personality, since I am a workaholic person, you cannot really force me to stay and keep quiet, okay? <laughs> I have to do something. So, I was uh, offered uh, to uh, share it share my journal share it to the world so yeah uh, and so i wrote it into a book uh innovative mind and body and it has 10 volumes <laughs> okay <laughs> and uh, there are uh, do it yourself how to um how to start your holistic lifestyle how to uh, move on how to love how to uh, so many things okay so one of in the course of me writing that, it's more on innovative mind and body. It's more of the wellness in mind and body. And of course, it touches the, the spiritual wellness. But since I am not a religious person, I only write, uh, I only read the Bible because I see it as a history book, okay? And I am fun and I like history. So I, I read it, but not on a religious aspect. Also, I am not that um, religious when it comes to prayer. So, I'm also, since I have a very open-minded <laughs> personality, meaning um, I am not into dogma. So, it will really take me a while to uh, accept some thoughts before I can, before I process it and finally uh, believe in it. So, anyway, uh, so it's just wellness in mind and body so it's innovative mind and body innovate the body and the mind in order to be well but then again it doesn't end there in the course of me doing whatever i'm doing um having a lot of talks um of course if you are exposed <laughs> to the commercial space and then there is also a competition there's also a lot of people that i've met along the way and there are also circumstances that I get into, which also challenges my peace. So I thought, uh, I thought it was just uh, a very relaxing uh, job because I am just recuperating from, from the stroke. But then again, it became an advocacy or, uh, after because since I, uh, the, the production that we have is an advocacy work, so we produce play, environmental for uh, advocacy, okay, for the children, environment, and nature, and women, okay, and the family as a whole. So, um, in the course of me meeting a lot of people, then I realize um, being well in mind and body is not enough. 
in order to achieve that peace and why do we need to achieve that peace in order to sustain our health and also to uh, sustain the health of other people and also because right after when you are already recuperating and when you are already well um, of course it's a discipline um, there is um, a call inside you like a conscience that will tell you to share it to the world and now how will you share that if it is not complete so from 2008 that I was doing the mall tours and office tours and then um, absorb everything my empathy helps a lot and then 2009 we had environmental forums then I met a lot of climate change uh, scientists and I also have a mentor on that um, may his soul rest in peace um, professor Roger Birosel, who got me into that environmental from Greenpeace onwards, okay, and then um, and then of course my director George Cordero also passed away, uh, who's also working for the culture and environment. So basically, I am in that kind of people that I'm dealing with every day, and also the environmental scientists, and then I just saw that um, wellness in the environment. Uh, sector uh, is more on protecting the environment on the outside but uh, environment on the inside meaning the self a lot of them are same thing with me a oh, uh, workaholic and also not much into protecting their own self because they are selfless um, mo most of the advocates I saw I also met during that time maybe in our generation I don't know the younger generation now but there are a lot of uh, environmentalists and advocates who doesn't take care much of their health um, that's what I saw uh, during that time 2009 2010 so I was doing a TV shows already I have two TV shows FCOT and then Wellness Filipinas Global News Network then I, uh, I guested a lot of environmentalists, scientists, um, and at, at the FCAT, I guested also a lot of innovators. FCAT is food, culture, arts, and technology, which we will discuss in a separate um, video. So, as, as we go along, as we talk, uh, my, my formula for wellness is not enough. It's just mind and body. So I put in the environment, okay, the environment. So mind, body, and then environment, okay. And then the spirit is just a prayer, okay. So wellness in mind, body, spirit, and then environment, okay. So in the environment, <laughs> if you are living in the Philippines, then you will see that there are a lot of politics because the environment and the political issues are intertwined. Uh, you cannot um, detach one from the other. Uh, maybe they are twins or um, born together by birth or whatever. But um, because the political, there are political matters that needs to be that needs to addressed upon in order to achieve the environmental justice as uh, we want it to be. So, uh, how, do I, uh, how do I discipline that in such a way that we can still have that peace within because uh, working for justice would really take a long time. And uh, in the course of us working for justice, how do we work for peace? Okay. Oh, daily. Okay, daily. Okay, I, I know uh, justice in the end will give us the peace that we wanted, but uh, what matters is, for me, is the day by day so that we can survive and we will not die because it happened to me. I've been working for the end point in the end, but in the process, I had stroke. So, might as well share to people how not to get stroke while we are working for our advocacies. And also, not only stroke, there are a lot of cancer and etc. So this time, 
I put in uh, the formula wellness in mind, body, and then environment. But the spirit is all still not that, um, uh, how do you call that? Still not that harnessed, okay? Now, <laughs> when, when I had the chance to, uh, after um, wellness in mind, body, spirit, Spirit, uh, wellness in mind and body, and then environment. And then my father died in 2010. Okay. So I mourn. Okay. Um, I have a very strong mind to the point that I just mourn after a month of his death. And I have to choose the place to mourn. So I choose, uh, since I am very close to the sisters in the convent, and they invited me there to uh, also mourn, okay, while I am in that stage. So I, uh, I was there inside the convent and uh, grieve for the loss of my father. And it really, it affected me a lot because uh, my parents are divorced. And uh, my father, I didn't see him for nine months, and, uh, nine years, nine years, not just nine months. And we were not close, so if you can imagine, <laughs> we have issues. I have personal issues that were unresolved uh, when he died, and then I missed him a lot. And I also have to settle those things that are um, unfinished business. In my mind, okay, not to them, but in my mind. So I, uh, I stopped doing my, my TV shows, okay? <laughs> I stopped doing my TV shows, let forget about the, the life in the city in Manila, and also forget my, um, my partner and decided to uh, just concentrate on myself you know, for healing. And then in the process of me being inside the convent, that's how I uh, was able to um, harness, uh, inculcate, uh, cultivate, detoxify, and learn how to be well in spirit. So. If, of course, uh, you, you don't have to go to the convent to do that. But the, the thing is, um, being in a silent, silent place, close to nature, will help a lot to um, achieve that wellness in spirit. Okay, so I have the wellness in mind, wellness in body. Now we have the wellness in environment, and then they have the wellness in spirit. Now the problem is now is the wellness in economics, okay? Because I've just realized, even though you have that mind, body, spirit, environment, even though we have that all that well, discipline and all, but we if we don't have that wellness in economics or that financial wellness that they're calling it, is that we cannot still achieve that or so even achieve or sustain that peace within and that it will be a problem to sustain it in sharing it for nation building. So, in 2011, um, I think that's January, I drafted the whole formula and uh, since during that time, it is also, there is a uh, a turmoil globally and there's also a, a, a call for your climate actions as um, part of um, well politically there are there there are different sides to it but um, in order for me to address the issue I uh, drafted this guideline and it's called the wellness for peace uh, initially, it was entitled Climate Change and Wellness for Peace. So I uh, presented it to um, FEU, Far Eastern University, for, uh, for their series of talks. And also at the UP Manila, in uh, yeah, University of the Philippines in Manila. 
And then um, I um, submitted it to UN for the um, part of the peace education worldwide. So the formula is uh, to achieve that peace is to make sure that to discipline ourselves in mind, body, spirit, environment, and economics. Okay, <laughs> so much for that. It's a, uh, I hope I was able to give you a glimpse of just the history of what is that. Okay, so what is wellness for peace? In wellness and environment, that there is the climate change, peace building, adaptation. Okay, and wellness in mind is to develop the personality at peace. In wellness in body, it is through detoxification, nourishment, strengthen, and exercise. Then wellness in spirit is the holistic living. Okay. The wellness in economics is still under process. And I connected it already to the peace innovation, meaning from the peace that we have to achieve it and then to sustain the peace through the wellness in economics by innovating it in FCAT food, culture, arts, and technology. But it's not yet here in the 2011 presentation. Okay. So, because the FCAT Peace Innovation started in 2016 when I am already uh, supporting the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And that is to the formula, is a way to sustain, to, uh, sustain the peace. Okay. So wellness is the human discipline, okay? Uh, in my definition, wellness is discipline to maintain balance in everything. So it's not just the food, it's just not organic. Uh, it is more on uh, discipline, learning to know what is good for you and what is bad for you. Good thing is right now we are aware of this already because we've been... Uh, using this, we've been, uh, maybe it's also, maybe I am, sometimes I will, I will humble myself, <laughs> okay, I will brag, no, that maybe this contributed a lot because I've been do, writing and doing this since 2011 and promoting it. And we, we now have a wellness lifestyle. So, um, wellness is not just a uh, Choosing a certain path that you are already on your own in the mountain or just a vegetarian um, or just um, don't, don't eat the meat anymore. Okay, there are people who are like that and I respect that. But to my definition of wellness, it is more of discipline. When we intake something that is not good for the body, then we learn to detoxify. But we will not leave the area, okay? We'll stay wherever we are as long as we can afford it, as long as uh, our body can adapt to it. Uh, let's say if you're working in the city, stay in the city. You don't have to go and uh, live a life in the mountain because I did that, okay? I live, tried to live in the shoreline, in the sea. It's not a resort. It's just a barrio where I... Uh, <laughs> I decided to live there for good. But people who are born to be city dwellers um, are not into it yet. Maybe, not yet. Because we have uh, work to do in the city. We have things to, to accomplish. Maybe in time. So if your personality, also in, if depends on the personality. So if your personality is more on the on the competition, wherever, okay, wherever the work must be, which is, um, and also the polluted area, uh, you can still be there, but practice wellness. So it's more of the discipline of the mind, body, spirit, environment, and economics. 
Then, in the process of us doing this wellness for peace, there is the peace vigil. Um, peace vigil is not just praying. It is being concerned from the freedom of strife. Okay. How do we do that? Um, we, we vigil, okay, for a year. We monitor what is going on with peace in our country. And then in the process of us monitoring it, observing it, okay, there are ways to monitor it, like um, by observation, personal observation. Also by conducting forums, talks, workshops. Me, I conduct workshops. So since 2003, uh, um, I use the results of the workshop for behavioral studies. It serves as a case studies that I can see and I can assess on where the peace is going and what how what is uh the status of peace in my country as i see it in the results of the workshop it's like a research but not a uh, written but more of an activity so it depends on you on how you do the peace vigil uh so if you can see my post i also put in a lot of peace vigil every year so that right now Starting the pandemic, um, Peace Vigil 2020, Peace Vigil 2020. So, um, <laughs> in, in, my, in my schedule, uh, my Peace Vigil is from 2011 up to 2030. I do not know what will happen after 2030. But for the meantime, uh, I'm finding ways on how to, um, how to find way, how to find solutions to the problem of the conflict in my country so the the pandemic has given us a different kind of uh adaptation measures because when i was doing it there, there was no we were not talking about pandemic uh we were talking about wars but now i realize the war is on health and the war is not on so we can have wars not even by bullets and guns, but we can have wars by just um, chemical warfare. So that's dangerous and that we have to prepare ourselves also. So the, my peace vigil since this time of pandemic is more on conducting trainings online webinars and then i started doing the forum this year so hopefully you can also join this uh forum okay so um then since um this is in support of the un programs that's why the peace vigil star uh ends actually is it ends okay it it, it ends on september 21 which is Globally, is the International Day of Peace, or it's called Peace Day. So after that, September 21, is that I have uh, uh, that reporting, November, then December. Uh, during the December time, since before the pandemic, that was the happiest moment of people. So there is a relax, we, we are relaxed in doing the peace vigil. Uh, up to January and then we start doing the peace vigil again by February <laughs> because of the love bugs and uh, effects of the Valentine going to the uh, Holy Week season going to the environmental month women's month and then onwards again to the Mother's Day Father's Day and um, uh, a lot of celebration, uh, also not celebration but commemoration also of other activities. So in the process, uh, we are monitoring that the the pulse of the people and also the emotions on how people view life and how does it affect the peace and how does it give solution to achieving the peace. So basically, that is the peace vigil. All right. So, and then uh, since there is also the call for climate change uh, as an action, so since that early, uh, this wellness purpose gears to that. Okay. 
So, there is the wellness, that is, there is that peace be chill, there is that UN peace day, and then the climate change, okay. So, uh, you are more attuned, no? expert on this climate change, but if you are not, we will do a video separate for that. But there are a lot of videos available already on the net. And I can also share it in this page about wellness, uh, about climate change, the status of our planet. And why do we need to take actions? And what is that warming of the earth? But, you know, uh, recently, there is also a good news that um, the... Um, this, the... Um, the effects of the pandemic had a good um, effect to the nature because they were able to recuperate and that um, maybe because people are inside the house and we are also uh, particular with our cleansing and health uh, discipline that's why nature was given the time so hopefully we can sustain that also. Okay. So, so why a need for peace be chill on wellness for peace to work for climate change, peace building adaptation? Because uh, of the burning fuels, which is detrimental to our nature. So the activities that contribute to greenhouse gas levels are burning fossil fuels, oil, gasoline, gas, and coal, industrial processes and mining, landfills, septic and sewer systems, agricultural practices including fertilizer and manure management, land use practices including deforestation, cutting of trees, etc., etc., and that's why there are extreme environmentalists who will really make the decision, decision not to eat meat but just to be a vegetarian or vegan not just a, and uh, because it will uh, lessen the carbon footprint and also to go organic to just eat um, um, you don't need to process the food or to transfer the food or to transport the the food just to get into one place but just to build your own garden in your place so um these are part of the climate uh, adaptation okay and it is part of the monitoring for uh, peace be chill okay okay so why are we doing this for nation building? The, the climate change will result into four key elements at risk according to the report, the climate of conflict, the links between climate change, peace and war. It is an international report way back in 2007 published by Don Smith and Jonami Vivekananda. Okay, that in the report, the hardest uh, hit, okay, people, uh, those who will be hit the hardest by climate change will be people living in poverty, in underdeveloped and unstable states under poor governance. So that that's, that is the reason. Not just because people are in poverty or in dire need, but those who are greatly affected by this climate change effect are the countries who are under poor governance. Not, okay, what are the aspects of poor governance? Those are corruption, uh, what else, uh, the sea law. The bureaucracy uh, so it, it, it is an overhaul but the thing is um, dwelling into that on a per issue basis is not enough we need 
to focus it to a climate action. Meaning, when we see it as a climate action, it is a, it is a, an environmental emergency. Okay, maybe we can you. Maybe if you are not an environmentalist, you cannot see it that way. But just to think of it, disasters are coming in. Pandemics is just, maybe this one that we have is just a, a dry run. But we don't know what will really happen in the next few years if there will be so many pandemics to come. Uh, these are all part of the changing climate. In general now if we will not address it directly then uh, our effort is not enough to um, curtail corruption or to talk about issues on political matters that is my opinion okay because in the report on this uh, climate of conflict as way back as in 2007 these are the four things that will um, happen because of poor governance number one political instability economic weakness food insecurity and large-scale migration okay the last one which is the large-scale migration even when there is even if a government is good doing well but their place uh, is susceptible to be eroded because they are near the shore near they are surrounded by sea or lowlands that means eventually because of the changing climate of the effects of this rising sea level then they will lose their place they will, they will lose their land that's why we now have this um, refugee status of people at, at they're asking for um um this um uh a, a need okay a need to give them a new uh, a new um, identity a new state a, a new place to to put in their their village because there are a lot of islands right now who are um, prone who are in danger of losing it and like us in the Philippines and uh, countries, okay, states in the Pacific area, we are a prone. So given with all that, what will happen to us if there is a large-scale migration? Okay, one, if we cannot uh, live in the places because it's already sinking, where will they go? They will go to the places that is on the higher land. So it's Let's say in the Philippines, if uh, their places in Mindanao or Visayas region is sinking, then migration will happen in where? In the in the Luzon area of the Philippines, which is the mass land area, highland area. Now, what happens there is that we will have an um if we if the supply is not enough okay there is overpopulation and then uh the problem with water the problem with uh housing the problem of uh at f first the 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 they call it um okay at first like uh, when we when we uh experience a lot of typhoons like Odette, Yolanda, those things. Okay, good thing after one big typhoon, there is a time to recover. But what if there are disasters and disasters from then and again? Like this week, there is a disaster, there's a typhoon. And then next week, another typhoon again, and then another 
weak typhoon again, what will happen? How can we cope up with that? It's the same thing with the pandemic. We thought it will end for a month after month. It's second month and third month and fourth month. Before we know it, we're already two years in the pandemic. So what if that, that the, the scientists are right and they have proofs that will really uh, that is really telling us that there is a rising sea level that will result to this problem political instability economic wellness economic uh, weakness sorry economic weakness food insecurity and large scale migration so what do we do if that thing happens, then, of course, the peace is at stake. Have you seen a lot of what is happening when people are not eating anymore? In other countries, you can see the riots. Uh, you can see uh, the, uh, the anger of the people. Uh, they brought it in the streets. Okay, And we saw that during this pandemic, even now. So what I'm saying is that maybe we are comfortable inside our home or where you are right now. But no matter how comfortable we are, it doesn't guarantee that the peace we have can sustain us if we are not doing anything to uh, adapt, actually, not just mitigate it all. Uh, we were talking about mitigation of the uh, of the uh, of the climate change way back as early as 1980s i remember <laughs> when i got into greenpeace uh through my professor that was 1989 1990 i was also a volunteer for human rights at the tfd uh, amnesty international at the same time we were already talking about um mitigation Mitigation and climate change wasn't a topic yet then, but we were just talking about how to protect the environment and how to how to uh, change our lifestyle in order to uh, to protect the trees, uh, to protect the soil, and then also to make sure that we still have our own uh, our own rice because they are starting to do those um, they were starting to do those uh, hybrid hybriding already and meaning as early as then so right now what are we doing uh given we have uh i think the best way to deal with climate change now is adaptation okay adaptation and peacemaking uses the same formula okay the double-headed problem of climate change and violent conflict thus has a unified solution because the mitigation aspect that we did is okay. It is good. It, I am not saying it is bad, but it also created a lot of division and subtraction instead of uh, addition unification and multiplication there are multiplication also yes there are a lot of concerns there are a lot of uh, environmental advocates now but being uh, always on um, I call it uh, discrimination okay that if you are not into this if you are not into an environmental issue then you are not part of us and then we will not talk to you. Oh, and then um, that was actually we saw that problem when we are um, when we are now uh, uh, eradicating the fossil fuels, and because uh, so many lost their jobs in the process, and also um, not not just because they are not concerned with the environment but but because that is their work that is where they they live that is their source of income so what do we do now is to adapt to find ways for climate adaptation and there are now innovative solutions to do that 
uh, that is the reason why uh, I conduct um, forum environmental forums uh, on by starting by by uh, April on Earth Day um, we will proceed uh, focusing on this uh, just on February uh, Arts Month and March is Women's Month but after that will be the environmental already and governance by May here in the Philippines. Uh, also, I, I'm inviting other countries to also join us. Okay, so since we are working for peace and environment at the same time, so the solution that we are seeing on, our, on my end and on on. Uh, the peop uh, and uh, the colleagues that I am with on peace work is uh, a unified solution, which is peace building and adaptation, because uh, these two are effectively using the same kind of activity, involving the same kind of methods of dialogue and social engagement requiring from governments the same values of inclusivity and transparency. So imagine this, as early as 2011, you are already talking about this. It's more of inclusivity and transparency. So everybody is welcome. No one is left behind. And that in, in the process of us doing that, we need to be transparent. Uh, no hidden agenda. No political maneuvering. No, um, we are not into here because we wanted to grab the power and be on top of everything. We are doing this climate uh, adaptation and peace building because there is a, an emergency in the environment. There's, there is an environmental emergency that we need to address. Okay, in the same manner, if you can correlate it to the pandemic emergency that we have, we need to have that kind of urgency in order to address this climate change. Okay, and the peaceful way to do that is to combine peace building and adaptation by doing dialogues, inclusivity transparency, and social engagement. And this requires a government uh, mandate. That's why the Wellness for Peace is intended not only for our own being. So I didn't do this just because uh, for just to be well uh, on my own, okay? This formula is intended for governance. Because, okay, uh, I, I will also address this to all the wellness practitioners, health advocates, and environment. Uh, we need to get out of our, our zone, okay, that uh, peaceful wellness zone, in order to contribute to the government policy making to hit the target and uh, adapt to what is needed because the climate is changing so when we work when we we push through for ending corruption and uh work and asking for transparency transparency and uh, integrity in the governance we are doing it because we are addressing the needs of the climate change and that we can do that peacefully through dialogue social engagement and inclusivity that's why if you can check my wall even though you know where i belong my background i never endorse any candidate i never mention anyone because everybody is welcome because we are all in this together we are breathing the same air and we, uh disasters will come and we are here to survive 
this political instability, large-scale migration, food insecurity, and sporadic conflict. Addressing that doesn't require your own political affiliation by that time. Remember, during the pandemic, we are all in this together, no matter what is your line. It doesn't matter at all. During disasters, we are all equal and one. <laughs> We, uh, we have to see it that way also. So whoever in the Philippine election, whoever wins, I will work with them in order for us to uh, bring this to the agenda. Use the Wellness for Peace formula for nation building to address these needs for climate through peace building and adaptation. Okay. So peace building approach to climate change is engaging communities and energies in a social process to work out on how to adapt to climate change and how to handle conflicts as they arise so that they do not become violent. It is an approach that brings the hard science of climate change which local communities do not and cannot be expected to know in the first instance and which must be communicated clearly together with local knowledge and understanding to figure out the mess mode of adaptation. That's why there is really a need to have a dialogue and an actual getting to know on what is happening locally, regional, in order to see what is the solution? So we are not giving away the solution, but we will have a dialogue so that they will be the ones to give us the inputs on how to solve the problem. Because if if just we will just put in those data that we have, okay, depending on where we are, that is our solution. But those the locals in that area living in that shoreline knows how to find Okay, maybe they, the solution is not that uh, concrete yet, but they are the ones who can provide us the concrete data on how we can make an adaptation measure. And from there, we can only do that if we put in everything. I mean, everyone is invited. So inclusivity, we will not discriminate anybody because they don't belong to any political affiliation that we like. If there is inclusivity, then we can gather the data open, open without, without uh, filtering, without restrictions. So the important thing is the input of the people in the local area. And we can do that through dialogue, open dialogue, meaning no political line, no political affiliation, but just a concern to address the environmental uh, emergency. Okay. The government cannot take on the task of taking the adaptation alone. Some governments lack the will, more lack the capacity, and some lack both. Well, we can see that. What is required is international cooperation to support local action. That is the reason why the UN is here to um, guide to, to, to guide how to do the forum, how to gather data, how to, um, how, uh, how to harness that adaptation measures. So it is not, the, the, uh, if you can see, UN now is open for volunteers, individual volunteers. Because in the process of us doing that, then we can have the, the data that is raw, and the data that is actual that we can see, that we can hear from people when they are comfortable talking about the topic already. Instead of uh, the usual very formal, okay, you go here and then you conduct a market research or you conduct a behavioral research or you conduct a cultural research. No, but um, getting the locals engaged in the actual dialogue and forum actually i call it dialogue actual dialogue no matter uh, two or three or four it doesn't matter how many it, it, we don't go by the numbers 
the important thing is so many people are involved and connected to one another and are free and comfortable talking about climate change, its effect, and how we can manage it, how, we, how, can, how can we adapt to it, how can we uh, address the, uh, 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 how do we find ways, okay, to address the problem brought about by this changing climate, which is the rising sea level resulting in sporadic wars, large-scale migration, food insecurity, um, uh, economic weakness, and uh, political instability, okay? So climate change could even reconcile otherwise divided communities by posing a threat against which to unite and tasks on which to cooperate. So we can see actually that um, being inclusive, okay, the adaptation measure, climate change adaptation can actually solve the problem of this of uh, this disunity of political affiliations. Because when we talk about matters on survival, disaster management, and then uh, adaptation through our lifestyle, we can actually unite each other together regardless of okay so maybe it will take a lot of discussion in the in in the in the next sessions okay so what is that wellness for peace formula for nation building and in addressing this climate uh, uh, in, in in addressing the effects of the climate change which is again i will repeat large-scale migration political instability food insecurity economic witness so in addressing that we have this wellness for peace formula that is the wellness in mind okay when i wrote it it's like this wellness in mind plus wellness in body plus wellness in spirit plus wellness in economics will produce the peace okay within and then within the family within the community, within the school, and then within a place, within a local, and then within a country. Okay. I have several videos here on how to start peace thoughts because basically it is the, sh the peace within that is the major problem. That's why we cannot accept others in our circle. And that is also the reason why I, I have several of these innovative mind and body healing methods, personality uh, development series uh, in order to achieve that peace within. Because that peace within, that is the investment in order to be a peace worker, peacemaker, and peace innovator. Not unless we have that, then we cannot proceed. And we, we can proceed, but there is a chance to uh, lose our own being, just go with the flow, or sacrifice ourselves and sacrifice our own health because when we are not peaceful within, then it creates a lot of diseases. And one of these is cancer and uh, stroke and other diseases. So it is very, very important to achieve that peace within so that we can keep ourselves healthy and also achieving that peace within will require a lot of discipline in mind body spirit and environment detoxification of the mind body discipline so there are a lot of ways to do that and there are videos on that here in the page of the wellness for peace education and climate change now Achieving that peace within in order to proceed with this whole uh, formula of uh, wellness for peace for nation building would require time. And even while we are also doing this uh, advo uh, work, okay, the peace work, there is also the process of uh, achieving that peace within. So we don't need to wait for it. But we, there is just the conviction of achieving that peace within while we are working outside. Okay? And that we have to accept the fact. That fact. <laughs> what is that fact? 
that the peace is not permanent. We always work hard on it. That means our peace within is not permanent. We always work hard on it. And that conflict, even to ourselves and to other people, is healthy because it is healthy, because it defines who we are. That means when we have conflict to other people, that means we are not one and the same. So we don't need to wait for the conflict to subside or for the conflict to be to, to end because there are conflicts to, that are ongoing but we have a task to do which is the effects of the climate change. So the mantra is peace is not permanent. We always work hard on it. Conflict is healthy because it defines who we are. What matters is we settle our conflict without Killing each other. All right. So in the videos, um, in this page, you can find how to start peace thoughts to start with peace within, and uh, how to work for justice, how to attain, um, how to have that. Uh, moment of peace through uh, prayers and uh, other other guidelines on the book Innovative Mind and Body. Okay, you can check on that. Now we'll talk about the wellness and environment. So climate change, peace building adaptation. So uh, we have here the biological sequest sequestration of carbon uh, dioxide. Okay, fertilizing the ocean with micronutrients, encourage organic farming practices, plant trees in idle lands, and do not cut trees if they are already there. I mean, imagine how, how difficult it is to bring up a tree and then you will just cut it. So just remember, if you have a tree in your backyard or in your office, you are already blessed because you are sharing that to your community. So do not cut it. Start urban farming in schools and in own space. And um, create a nature-friendly teams and environment groups in schools and in workplaces. Okay. Also in wellness and environment is be open to the idea of shifting to renewable energy. Um, Contributes to 1% of global electricity production, one of the fastest growing energy sectors, renewable energy. Okay. Um, then another one is in the environment, wellness and environment is be open to the idea of shifting to uh, solar energy, solar electricity, solar thermal. Be open to the idea of shifting to uh, hydroelectric power, small hydro projects, especially run of the river hydroelectric uh, generation without reservoir, offer the great, uh, greatest potential for new climate friendly capacity instead of large hydro projects. Okay. And then be open to the idea of shifting to ocean power, tidal power, wave power as a source of energy. Be open to biofuels, fast growing, and but it's very controversial because two key questions remain unclear. Okay, uh, more um, the food is being used for fuel, okay, to harvest that. So... This one, uh, you, we can also discuss this again. And then, um, under wellness in mind, is to develop and promote the energy conservation habit anywhere, anytime, all the time. So how do we do that? As addressing the climate, climate change problem, okay? Uh, Wellness in mind is to drive less by scheduling trips or joining carpool, greening of homes for better insulation. Like only the area where you are with energy saving light. Reuse, recycle, don't use plastic bags, buy groceries in big packages 
and learn to budget it instead of buying small items to lessen plastic wrappers. Monitor your waste and stop buying unnecessary items to lessen garbage. That is also what I am proposing and telling everybody, do not buy. Only buy it when you need it because you don't have it. But if you have it, do not buy. Like clothes. Me, I don't buy clothes. <laughs> they are just supplied by my sponsors. But given if I will buy, I will only buy it because I don't have it. But I have so many clothes. <laughs> right now, uh, we're not even going out. So why do you need to buy? Right? <laughs> because the more you buy, the more you create trash. That's why 